Uh, hello everyone! Welcome to Ma Making the Rounds with a still atrocious but slightly less terrible overlay. Uh, <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay! Um, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and talk about the Asian ones because I'm for all the two people who care about LPL and LCK, obviously we are slightly more biased in favor of those regions because that's kind of the stuff that we started writing about first, started watching first, or started watching the most, I guess we should say. So we are going to cover that. Uh, don't worry, we will have a separate video for NA versus EU if that's what you're here for, but hopefully... So if for some reason you're lost, you can just skip ahead to that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so we're probably going to focus more on the LPL and the LCK stuff, because I think you and I both watch less LMS than an LMS expert, and we don't want to just insult the people who actually watch the region by pretending we know exactly what we're talking about. First of all, I think we're going to talk a little bit about OMG, because this is the, the team that I think is the most confusing to people who don't watch LPL or who are watching the Rift Rivals and they're wondering what's going on, where they, they beat MVP on the first day and then they lost to... Machi 17? Or Machi Shuti. Woo! As the broadcast said, Woo! Woo! Oh my, oh god. my god! She was insane! <laughs> uh, never again. Okay. <laughs> the thing about OMG is that they have probably a group B in the LPL right now. It has a group format like the European League of Legends Championship Series does where you have groups in group A and group B. I think it's really safe to say that the gap between the top teams in the LPL and the rest of the teams is just a massive gulf. It's gigantic. And I think that it's weird because it's like you have the bottom of the region, mo which is most of it. You have maybe the top two teams and then OMG are just kind of in the center of the gap. So there's like this vast, inexhaustible gap, and OMG are in the center, <laughs> so it's there's a massive chasm between them and W and EDG, and there's a massive chasm between them and everyone else. But I think that people who think that OMG, just because they haven't lost a series yet, are the best team in the LPL, aren't aware that they've Mostly, except for one week, we've had one week of cross-region play. They've mostly only faced teams within their group. And one of the, the very first series they played was RNG, so that's maybe the only team that could potentially threaten them within their group. And RNG had looked even worse the first week than they do now. If you can imagine that. <laughs> if you watch their <laughs> games today, so it's really difficult to say that OMG are really strong. I think I want to classify OMG's flaws, like why do I say they're bad? I don't think they understand the difference between champions and that when you pick certain champions, you you have to play the game differently. It's It's really weird, right? Like this type of concept it should be really easy to understand but it's like omg will play exactly the same way regardless of what comp they drop they'll try to play uh one through one to a certain point because it's like this brand new golden tool that they discovered lost in the middle of the shed and it's like oh one through ones are really cool even if it doesn't make sense they'll play it and then uh if it gets to a certain point they'll 5v5 and this is a really simple formula that they try to execute. So if their composition isn't good for 5v5ing, then they lose the 5v5s. If their composition isn't good for 1-3-1ing, like the first game against MVP, the entire last 10 minutes, okay? The entire last 10 minutes, they could have just 5v5ed and won the game. But Icon kept pressuring top lane really, really close to the turret where he could get engaged on and picked off. And... It's just, it baffles me. You know what the worst part about that is, though? Because then in, against Machi, they, they, played they did the, five the opposite. Five. <laughs> yeah, they don't understand. Like, I'm telling you, they don't know that champions are different. Like, fundamentally, <laughs> like, they, they just <laughs> kept 
trying to fight and like impaling them on Machi, and Machi were kind of like, okay, like this just... is happening, I guess. Like you just set us up beautifully for this rumble equalizer across the entire team. So, yeah. how do I tell if OMG are going to win a game? It's really <laughs> quite simple. I look at the other team. Does the other team int randomly in 5v5s? If yes, does OMG have a, a, an AD carry that can carry in the late game? If yes, OMG win. If you say no to either of those things, OMG lose. It's pretty impressive. They can also do it with uh, Kassadin. Kassadin works too. <laughs> I also feel like the best way to characterize the way that OMG play, it's like you have top, jungle, and mid trolling the entire game, like goofing off, trying to dive towers randomly, or just like run, run around in the enemy jungle, like... I... Jekko? Can we stop with Jekko? Can we bring World 6 back? Because I don't understand uh, yeah, why like, Jekko is like on World this team. Like, uh, you talk to the coach and the coach says that Jekko is like much more methodical in his head and much has a lot more planning and idea of like how he wants to do the paths before the game and this is why like they're playing with Jekyll more but I he, he's not as good he's just he seems to like if he's thinking about the paths he's overthinking them because he's they're either really predictable or he'll invade on weak side or it's really weird so for me, I don't really understand why Jekko is playing. There's probably some internal thing, because there's always some internal thing when you don't understand why there's a substitution on a Chinese team. Uh, so, and then of course, like, so there's a lot of trolling by top jungle and mid, and then you just look at bot lane, and SMLZ and Five are diligently winning their lanes. I guess. Or I wonder if, like, SMLZ is just, like, <laughs> where the converter at all of them. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I noticed, so, like, one of the matchups I was looking forward to the most was MVP-OMG, actually, and it's mm -hmm. because even though I watch them every week and I rant every week about how poorly MVP are playing, and I even wrote an article being, like, why is this team sucking, and part of it is, um, like, a lot to do with it is honestly because the way they were winning... It's based a lot on coordination and synergy and not actually, like, uh, necessarily good map movements or really good understanding of how to use pressure. Um, when I first saw them, it reminded me a lot of, like, when you saw ESC Ever abusing globals at IAM Cologne, um, if anyone remembers that. It was, like, forever ago. And I think it was also really obvious when MVP played the Afrika Freaks because I think Afrika had a much better understanding of the map, and it was very obvious even though they lost um, in the playoffs in spring. So I was really curious because MVP are this team where I'm like, okay, just how bad are they? <laughs> and the answer is they're still pretty bad. Um, mm -hmm. They were gifted, what, four kills to beyond um, really early on on the rec side, and they still were not able to make the most of that advantage. Um, they had these really, really weird, like, they had that Baron where afterwards they just, like, almost got aced because OMG were just like, okay, we're going to collapse on you because you have no idea what you're doing. Um, their Barons have actually been especially bad this split. That's been, like, one of their worst things. Like, even if they get Baron, it's just not usually pretty. Um... So I was curious about this for sure, just because like even if OMG aren't the best team in China, they are undefeated. So I was looking at this as kind of a weird barometer, and I don't really know if it told me anything. Like MVP still are bad, which makes me sad, but I don't feel like I learned anything new about them. I don't really feel like it reflects on Korea as a whole. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, I was kind of sad, I, like, part of me, just because of how they came up and were beating all of these teams that they, like, quote-unquote shouldn't have beaten, um, especially last split, I was kind of hoping that they would maybe figure some stuff out, like, 
maybe find their groove, but yeah, it was a uh, their mid and late game is just not good. Yeah, and I don't really know if you have anything to add about that. Like, it, it's just they made a lot of really terrible, terrible decisions. Yeah, like I said, it was mostly I just looked at the the OMG checklist, and <laughs> yes, MVP is a team that randomly ends in mid late game team fights. So I, even though they got that huge that quadra kill off of the dive, I felt like for most of the game that OMG were still gonna win, and then they had the really t like. Uh, just the the engage by Ed, and then yeah, the fact that he was completely split off from his team, and That's he's engaging into all, the the Zaya with the ults here. up, and I, I'm just completely baffled. Honestly, it's happened all year. I don't know what like so so with stuff like that. They didn't used to be that bad. Like, and you know this, you saw them last bit, like, they didn't used to be that disjointed where you'd have either, like, especially, so for this split, um, it's been Max, Ed, and Beyond, Mm -hmm. and sometimes they will just be, like, Beyond, it's usually in ganks, he'll come in too early or too late, they won't, like, very visibly won't be communicating with his laners as well as he used to, but then Ed and Max starting team fights, sometimes you're just, like, you're either, like, a full, I don't even know, like 10 seconds early or late, and it makes a huge difference. And I don't know why that's happening. Like, because that was not a problem they had last split. Like, that was their strength, is that they fought well together, even if maybe their macro decisions weren't as strong. They overcame that through communication, coordination. And I don't, I don't know what happened. They suddenly stopped talking to each other. I don't know. It's really frustrating. Yeah. Anyway, that's my MVP rant. <laughs> they make me sad. Yeah, MVP make me sad as well. Uh, what else makes me sad is Samsung. And yeah. uh, Samsung and Edward Gaming was a really weird match because you had... I mean, if, I, it's, it's really crummy to blame draft for this but EDG managed to draft like these all these losing lanes and then they still got ahead in bot side but I think that Scout just Scout and Crown have both had really awkward spots. I don't think Scout really understands matchups right now. (laughs) I think that's a harsh thing to say like I watched him play the Cassiopeia LeBlanc matchup which Cassiopeia, you should be able to win level 2 pretty easily. Cassiopeia beats a lot of things level 2 just because of the fact that she can get the QE um, pretty effectively. And uh, she just kept blowing her ult on LeBlanc when LeBlanc would have the distortion up. This was an LPL. But this is, so it's unrelated, so I'd watch him make like a lot of basic mistakes like this in his matchups, and today his Talia walls were really bizarre, and he... I don't really understand what Scout was doing, but I'm not gonna blame him entirely, because I feel like Edward Gaming compositionally didn't really understand how they're gonna play this game. <laughs> Clearlove says all this stuff like, I think Avalon is still really good into certain matchups, and then he picks it into Gragas, and yeah, Gragas is usually a jungler, and yeah, you can play Eve into Gragas okay, but it could have been a top flex, so it's just, I don't know what's going on. It's It was, it was uh, sad, because I feel like Edward Gaming had an opportunity to actually take that game, and uh, they just made a bunch of really, really dumb mistakes, and they out-mistaked Samsung's dumb mistakes. So yeah, I mean, I think a lot of so a lot of people who maybe haven't seen Samsung since either the World Championship or maybe you didn't see them get destroyed by KT in the playoffs, because I think that was another like very specific example of a team who targeted a lot of weaknesses that Samsung have. Um, 
it, at that time, it was uh, they really attacked Ruler's champion pool, and they took him off of these comfort picks, so it made it really difficult um, for Samsung to do anything because Deft and Mata just like obliterated them. Um, this was a little different. Like Ruler was still on. Like Varus is a very comfortable champion for him. Um, I thought Cube played really well, but I know that a lot of people will look at like their first game against J Team and they'll be like, "Oh, sure they struggled, but like maybe they didn't didn't take the game as seriously." Um, their draft was a little bit weird. They basically picked like all comfort picks and ended with the Rumble, um, which was a little odd given what they gave up to J-Team, especially with the uh, Elise Renekton. Or no, they picked Renekton last, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Elise and Kalista, I guess. Um, but anyway, like my point is that I think a lot of the issues that they had against J-Team were actually really visible in their most recent match, which if you guys didn't watch it, they got perfect gamed by Jyn Air. And Jyn Air are like... <laughs> I don't want to shit on them because they're not a bad team. Like, they're not MVP, right? Like, they're not this team that randomly makes, like, really bizarre calls and doesn't understand how to use pressure. And they actually have um, pretty good mid-priority with Kuzan, which has allowed MT to, like, int a lot less because that was a major issue for them. Um, I'm still waiting for Korea to really, like, push him a little bit more off of, like, the Lee Sin um, and a few of his other, like, comfort picks. But anyway, that's beside the point. I think Jenner, <laughs> Jenner did a really good job of out-rotating Samsung and also taking advantage of the fact that Crown has really struggled this split. Um, and that was a curious thing, I think, going into some of the discussion around Samsung uh, before the JT match was people were like, yeah, Crown is just you know, ridiculous, and he's actually been having a really rough time. Um, and even today, we saw him do random weird shit, like <laughs> greeting for blue buff when the, you already know where they are, they're in your jungle. Like, why are you doing that? Like, you have, you're pushed in, you have no mid pressure, you're randomly going up. Uh, like, I, that was like the, the glaring thing where I was like, if you're P1, this, it works. No, okay, sorry, keep going. <laughs> it works. <laughs> it's always very easily punishable. And J Team, uh, I think it was in the, it was in the J Team series, I think. Yeah, like they punished him for it. And it was just like, why? Like, what? I don't know. Yeah. Like, I don't know if he just randomly loses his mind sometimes. Um, I was, I thought, I actually thought the rumble was really weird, but QV made it work because morning is not... <laughs> um, that matchup shouldn't have gone the way it did, in my opinion. Um, but I think that was also one of the reasons not to, like, like, I think Cube is a good... I actually think Cube is pretty undervalued in terms of a top laner in Korea because he's overshadowed by a lot of people. But I don't think he should have won that matchup in lane. Uh, I think Morning didn't play the Renekton very well. Um, and then he had a really good NAR game in Game 2, which covered up, again, a lot of, I think, Samsung's problems with having strong mid-pressure and also the fact that Ambition sometimes just likes to not be available, and if you don't have control of mid lane, that can actually be a huge problem. Um, as we talked about with Trick uh, previously in G2, I think the uh, Samsung have some of those similar problems, depending on how Ambition plays. He doesn't always play that way, but that is his default play style that he's known for, um, especially on things. Uh, like Rek'Sai, even New Rek'Sai, and, uh, and Gragas. So, I mean, Samsung, it's kind of one of those things where I've been watching them and I've been waiting for teams to punish them, and I'm glad that they finally are getting punished. Like, I was really happy with that Jyn Air series, not only because it showed me that Jyn Air learned a lot of things, but because Samsung were really getting punished, and I think they were punished again in, uh, in the J-Team series, at least. I think... EDG, once they had that bot, uh, that bot TP with QV coming in and landing that, like, really great NAR ult, 
um, in bot lane. I think that that's kind of where they took the game over. Sure. I don't have, I guess, a lot to add, and I want to make this maybe a bit short, so... Uh, what I kind of do want to ask, like, what do you think of the format right now? Because I think it's a little bit interesting where they're having fourth place all play each other, and then third place all play each other, second place, first place. Uh, what do you think about that? I think it's pretty interesting. Like, I've been interested in all of the matchups just because, like, for example, the, um... The like some of the oh my gosh, what's the word I'm thinking? Why am I blanking on this? Like, and when you're comparing regions, right? It's really difficult to say like this this team versus this team when, especially once you get past the top teams. So I actually kind of like that. The thing I'm the most curious about with this format, and it's not something you asked, so I'm sorry if it's off topic, but whether teams are, whether they're actually going to, um, like, choose different teams, or whether they're just going to throw, like, their, so, like, Korea is just going to throw, like, SKT right. out there. Um, well, they just can because, only play two, right? In the relay? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, it's it's an interesting question because if I thought about this a little bit in the gauntlet as well as like if you just want to play your first best team first, you can do that as Korea. Um, it's it's kind of an interesting thing because I think I like that it's like four 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 four, but I think that it would have been more fun. Or it would have been more interesting if you had the teams go by, have the coaches rate the teams, or have yeah. set beforehand, so it was more like which of the teams is actually the worst one now, next against which of the teams is actually the third worst now, as opposed to the last split, because I think we have had mm -hmm. shakeups a bit uh, in that yeah. regard. Maybe not as much in Korea, because I think it's fair to say that it's still MVP 4th, Samsung 3rd, KT 2nd, SKT 1st. Yeah, it depends on how you feel about KT. I'm actually really curious to, and I like posted a rant about that, <laughs> but um, I'm curious to see them play uh, and see how they take this tournament, but in general, I would say even with their record, I think they have looked better than Samsung in terms of understanding what's wrong with their team, even if they haven't fixed it. <laughs> so, it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting. Them versus RNG should be pretty interesting. I'm looking out for that matchup. It's... Also, MVP Machi should be... <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Uh, the RNG-KT matchup will be kind of interesting, because KT are feeling a little down is my yeah. understanding, and RNG are kind of gaining some momentum, but the problem with RNG now is that they're really, really just dependent on Xiaohu, so theoretically there is an opening then if Xiaohu just, like, t picks the open sore that is Pawn, <laughs> it's, like, it's a really harsh way to uh, put it. Yeah. No, it's true, I mean, but, so my problem with Pawn isn't even, like, his, it's funny to, like, pick on him this split, because I think he has a lot more defenders now, just because mm -hmm. his statistics have been good. But there are just some times where he looks so lost, and it really affects their ability to apply pressure elsewhere. Um, yeah, I do think they're in a position where, like, R&D's greatest strength is... can take advantage of some of KT's base flaws, and they they play really similarly, obviously both are heavily influenced by Mata. Uh, so, it's interesting. I actually have been seeing RNG play a lot more at these comeback games this split, and I think part of it is just that they're, they can't rely on bot winning, and mm. Shango has focused more on farming instead of ganking. Which I actually think his pathing has improved, even though 
the broadcast narrative is, oh my gosh, his pathing is suddenly so bad. It's like, no, that's just MLXG, and actually I think it's a little bit better this split, but hey. He was never someone I would cite as a pathing, jung he's, pathing jungler. He's, he'll just talk these games where it's like, we're not going to take blue buff until five minutes in because we're ping-ponging between lanes, and now we're two levels behind the enemy jungler because they took our raptors that we didn't bother to take. Uh, <laughs> and Score is a jungler that will take advantage of that. Yeah. Um, even though he's obviously not... So if you haven't watched KT in a while, he's been struggling mm -hmm. a bit. Um, I think he... So, like, speaking of someone who had exemplary pathing, yeah. um, I think that he's become a lot more predictable this split. Um, I don't know if it's because he I feels... I always hmm? feel like Score is predictable, though. Like, I don't feel like Score is all, the super, like, ultra-creative. He just is correct, if that makes sense. Yeah. No. Uh, and, and I think he's... I think he's been less correct, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Just because I feel like... Um, and again, I wrote about this in an article, but just to summarize, I think that KT have... Uh, are are a little bit indecisive as to where they want to put their resources, and by resources I don't mean like necessarily gold, but just attention and like how they push waves and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a bit of a strain between uh, Deft and and Mata and then Smeb. Mm -hmm. um, and Smeb is Smeb has looked a lot better this split in terms of like synergizing with the team, which is really important for a top laner. But I still think that strain is there. And I think Score looks a little bit more lost this split uh, with communicating with those two lanes. And then there's Pawn, who's just kind of, yeah, there. We'll obviously talk about those teams more tomorrow. Yep. Did we want to talk a little bit about SKT flashes at all? I, I wasn't really uh, surprised by anything that happened in that match, but maybe there was any something worth noting. I didn't, I mean, it went as expected. I think <sighs> Flash Wolves. They had a pretty good swap uh, and took advantage of the tempo there, but it, it's just, it's always Flash Wolves are somewhat creative about how they use the lanes early on and the waves early on. They're good at applying pressure mid. That happened as well. It, it's just, we've seen this matchup so many times now. Yeah. And it always seems to go kind of the same way, except for at MSI most recently, where Maple did poorly in lane, which was uncharacteristic. But otherwise, the matchup always seems to kind of go the same way. Uh, I think one thing that's in favor of Flash Wolves this split that wasn't at MSI is that now we have engaged supports again. And if I felt like that'll help, that that might help Flash Wolves a lot at this tournament. But otherwise. Obviously not against SKT. <laughs> yeah, that was. I mean, that was rough. It was like a twenty-five minute game or something like that, like twenty-four, twenty-five minutes. Um, it went about as expected. I do think like flash are really weird to talk to about SKT because they recognize that like like they put themselves like here and then they put SKT like mm -hmm. here, even when they talk about them. And I think. Previously, that's helped them in the matchup because they've gone in, like, without any sort of... They're just like, oh, we're going to lose anyway. Um, and that's actually, weirdly enough, why they were able to win. Um, but I think if they... So, their early game went about as expected. It then comes down to, like, mid to late game, and they weren't able to... I don't think they were able to transition very well, and obviously, SKT is, like, the best team at punishing that, so... Um, I mean, I don't know, I don't, I guess maybe people would think it was weird that they started, uh, um, like Peanut? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah um, they have to start Huni, right, because they took Blank? Yeah, mm. they took Blank as their other subs, so, um, but I thought they were fine, uh, that might have been the only thing that's surprising, because I don't know if anyone's aware of the way Blank's been performing, but he's been looking really great. So, uh, but yeah, I that was the matchup I 
It's kind of low pressure because SK2 already beat Flash Wolves with this lineup, so. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like the real gap is between SKT and everyone else. It's not between Korea and everyone else. <laughs> Just watch MVP. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or even Samsung. I mean, I think yeah. I even think... though they won, Samsung's flaws were definitely on display. So Probably. Yeah. yeah, the most likely upsets I would see would be someone taking games off Samsung in the gauntlet. But, yeah. Otherwise, it's kind of how it's been going. Super fun. Yep. Uh, so we'll talk about, oh, Jax. Do we want to talk about the Jax at all before we go? Because I feel like I've seen Jax in LPL and no one knows how to use it, right? And <laughs> it's very frustrating. It's like everyone's trying to team, even Hooney is team fighting with it. And Ziv with the Mid lane oh. Jax taking yeah. mid lane tier one while RNG were sieging their base. It was really bizarre. I don't under, I don't think any of these teams know how to use Jax, but maybe they'll figure it out. Like I think the pick could actually be good. It just requires a really significant lane lead and then the ability to do a lot with single pressure. I think it's really yeah. good with Rift Herald pickups. So, I mean, maybe that's something that develops over the course of this tournament. Yeah. Alright, so thanks everyone for watching, and we'll be back tomorrow.